Well, it's a rare opportunity for the men and women who fought bravely for our country to actually go to the nation's capital and see all the memorials dedicated to them. One way for them to head to Washington, D.C. at no cost is through the honor flight. Bob Meyer and Roger Myers are here to talk more about that. And, Bob, what exactly is the honor flight? Well, it's a, it's a local group of volunteers that, uh, that raise funds and organize flights uh, and take World War II vets, as you said, Adam, uh, at no cost uh, from Fort Wayne, a direct flight into Washington and spend a day touring and, of course, to see the memorial that was dedicated for them. And Roger, uh, you are a veteran of World War II, as I understand it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah um, you went on an honor flight. Talk to me about your experience a little bit. Well, I was just absolutely <clears throat> amazed at what went on in a, in a day on the honor flight and the number of people that uh, volunteered their time and, and visited the airport to see the group off. Uh, everything was just class service, and uh, it, it was... It, it really moved me, I, I'll have to say, on that. Bob, what type of memorials do you guys visit on the honor flight? Well, you know, to date, we've uh, flown uh, our eighth flight last October, and we've taken 490 vets from Fort Wayne to, to D.C. and back, and they've been 100 percent World War II uh, veterans. So our first stop, of course, is to see the World War II memorial, and that's our whole mission is to get those vets up to see that memorial that wasn't dedicated until, t until 2004. And uh, after that, we make stops at uh, the Lincoln area. We see the, the uh, Korean War Memorial. The Vietnam Wall is right there close. We do a drive around Iwo Jima. We stop. Uh, we always have ladies on board. Well, we're two ladies now. So we always stop at the Women's Memorial. And then we terminate the day. Usually uh, our last day is uh, our last stop of the day is at the uh, Arlington Cemetery for the changing of the guard. And then on the way out of Arlington, then we usually make a pass on New, Air, New Air Force Memorial. And then from there, we're back to the airport, and then we fly back to Fort Wayne. Gotcha. Bob, I had a chance, I think in 2010 it was, to, to actually go on the honor flight with you and uh, I think, I don't know how many were in that crew, but we flew to D.C. I know, this, like you were saying, a very emotional, very moving, touching experience. Can you talk a little bit about what people say as they're on the honor flight and what well, happens to these you know, veterans it's, it's when they're just, on it? Uh, it's incredible, the uh, gratuity and the, the attitude and the response we get from the vets. And the, the comment I hear from a lot of them is, you know, sir, this was uh, probably the best day of my life. And we hear that a lot, you know, which is hard to, hard to imagine. But I know Roger is, is, just continues to compliment us on our trips. And, uh, but it's the least we can do. I mean, these vets all deserve so much. And here we are this late in the game trying to provide a trip up there. And, and we're doing the best we can to get as many up there as we can. And we've got two flights scheduled here in, in May. So, uh, but the, the comment, it's just uh, they're so grateful. And, uh, and they just can't believe that there's anybody interested in doing this. They don't, a lot of them say, well, why do, why do I deserve this? You know, what, why are you doing this? Well, you know, <laughs> we know why they deserve it. Right. And uh, it's just a matter of uh, trying to get the funds and uh, get as many up there as we can. Because it's, uh, we got a time clock running on this program because, you know, these, the average age of our vet now is like Roger's 80. I'll be 89 pretty soon. 89. So our <laughs> average, he's about an average age vet. Yeah. And uh, our last flight, we had 18. Uh, World War II vets are over 90 with a 97-year-old on our flight. Our oldest vet was 97. So the clock's running on us. And, and the numbers that we're here now, there's about 1,000 to 1,200 per day passing of the World War II vets. So, you know, we're trying to uh, work against the clock here. So. All right, we got a couple seconds left. Do you know how the community can get involved? Well, right now, Adam, our, uh, our biggest uh, uh, thing that we need help with is trying to get the word out to the vets. Our second flight in May is not full yet, and we still have some open seats, and we're striving to fill that up with World War II vets. So if they'll get the word out uh, to any vet, World War II is our priority, and then following that is the Korean War. So we're taking applications. So if, if they would help us on getting the word to the vets, and of course we're a nonprofit, and these are very expensive trips, so we're always looking for financial support. Okay. Yes, well, sir. Bob and Roger, thank you so much for joining us on First News Sunday, and thank you for your service, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. We'll have more coverage you can count on coming up after the break.